Hello, stranger. Been a little while. New house. Move past it. Let's do some robots. Well, another year, another Transformers movie. Yes, indeed. The last night hits cinemas in June, which means we'll all be neck deep in one step changes and $25 deluxe figures before you can say fool me five times. So what do we know so far? Well, we know all the Autobots from last time are coming back and so is Megatron somehow. We know there's a brand new and inspiring generic robot attached to a lucrative car sponsorship and assigned the name of an arbitrary beloved character in a French accent. We know there's what appears to be a Bayformer's minion who only says Chihuahua and the toy's gonna be everywhere and the people at work are gonna see it and give me the stank eye like, uh, that's what you're into. We basically know all that far out fantasy stuff about King Arthur and Churchill's gonna get glossed over in a 90 second prologue. We know we're gonna sit there Kubricked out while dozens of indistinguishable baddie robots with juggalo ass names get punched to death in nauseating Ipecaco vision. And we just know Josh Duhamel's gonna turn slowly to the camera and say, he is certainly dead. And Anthony Hopkins is in it, rattling off nonsense exposition about the history of the Transformers. It's like every time I see that, I temporarily turn into an Iron Man villain. This guy's a genius, he really is. He's the, the same elk as Oliver Stone and Spielberg, those people in Scorsese there. Brilliant. Listen to yourself, Tony. So I have rather soured on the Transformers movies lately. I mean, I always enjoy them the first time, but with every rewatch they get exponentially worse. Like the exact opposite of Hot Fuzz. I mean, I watched the first one the other day. Where's the DVD? There it is. I mean, I rewatched the first one the other day and I found myself getting more warm and fuzzy feelings for the hype surrounding the movie than the movie. Like, remember those publicity stills and teaser footage that implied a way better movie than we actually got? And the intrigue and furore around the robot designs that never really went away. But the hype was real and I was vibing. Like, there was merchandise everywhere with that sweet new tungsten-y branding and I even kinda loved the first game, even though it was dreadful. Hell yeah, come on, B, let's kick some... <laughs> and it's from that same surrounding miasma of overblown hypermasculine robot energy that today's subject comes. Fresh out of 2009, it's Revenge of the Fallen Stratosphere. Strat yourself in. Yes, indeed, this lanky love bucket comes from a small sect of tangentially movie-aligned Voyager flyboys with mind-blowing militaristic alt modes and buckets of charisma. If memory serves, I think Stratosphere was one of the first Revenge robos announced along with, like, Demolishor and Sideways, but I don't think he showed up until about wave four. I think that's right, although I do drink a lot. Anyway, let's get spurious. So this is, I think, one of the the tallest Voyager figures ever. I mean, he is phoning it in a bit with all this absurd jet junk reaching skyward like a thirsty skyscraper. But if you count it, he's taller than like 90% of the leaders and the odd combiner even. But he is mostly bluster, like the portion of his torso that's actually a torso is just this bit. Any further back and you're in kibble country and the rest is just limbs. But that's his shtick. It's why he's good. So yes, torso is basically an exploded nose cone. Head's an extremely unusual kabuki looking sucker rocking a sort of cockpit trill be with awkward but spectacular hat piping. Arms are just all joints like one of those wibbly snake toys. They're actually pretty fun though. He's got like poseable fingies and thumbs with an ugly cutout with nothing to hold. And there's a tiny bit of internal mech alive in there that's so subtle it might as well not be there. Oh mech alive, why were you a thing? Don't know what this hot root vegetable orange is all about though. Actually the colours are pretty horrific overall. Like the flat grey is at least appropriate for a big military robot, but why would you then accent it with more grey and like lend soup ecru. Anyway, pants down what he's just as bewildering. Check out those legs, aren't we a stratting young lad? So the thighs are a bit stiff and like the swivel don't even play. They are quite cool actually, like in a very non-movieverse way, like they're all bare bones, naked struts and what looks like industrial flooring. Look at these canoe ass kicks. I guess he would need a stable base to keep all of this under control, but they do seem a little underdeveloped. They're really right on the line between minimalist and who gives a shit. Like they're literally just fuselage and a screw. And they're just the bottom line on a truly unique and endlessly charming Robo Boy. I mean, I can sit here and dissect it all you want, but Stratosphere is just so weird. I mean, look at that silhouette. He's like a friggin' Vitruvian asterisk. <laughs> Transformation works pretty much how you think it does. All the limbs sort of cluster up into a sausage and it all ties up neatly with a bit of pre lug nut automorph. Remember that? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Stratosphere's meaty jet mode. Now, apparently this isn't an actual real world plane. Rather, it cannibalizes a cast of cargo carrier carcasses into a cobbled together cacophony of kick ass. Check out this fierce fly guy. Like you almost never see sober utilitarian airplane modes. Utilitarian planes. <laughs> no. Oh, I used to be good at this. And I 
appreciate that it's not harboring some secret silly space gun or daft showboaty paint job. It's kind of a sensible treat. So yeah, check out that vast wingspan with the oddly orange-tipped Angry Birds engines and these pang winged insignias. Wing signias? Not totally sure what I'm supposed to do with the tail fin. Like, does it go like that? Or like that? Or like that even? Undercarriage is a bit tenuous, like it seems to be just barely maintaining its chill. But you gotta love the two actual rolly wheels and the 48 false ones. Face ends sporting some bitchin' bulbous chops with the cheeky roundy ball nose, infinity billion windows and like the beginnings of a shopping list. Not totally sure what I'm supposed to jam into that blowhole there. Big ridiculous gun, tiny ridiculous shuttle, robot riding a gorilla, riding a pogo stick, riding a plane. Gotta blowhole something. So Stratosphere as a character doesn't really exist. I mean it was in the Dark of the Moon game for about four minutes and what felt like a spirited recreation of a boss fight from Afterburner. Other than that it seems he was only produced as like general military mise en scene, catering singularly to Bay's boner for all things that go wooshy wooshy bangy boomy. And as a nod to the opening of Rotifer, when Optimus dive bombed out of a jet that looked a bit like that sort of. To which end, big old Stratovarius comes neatly packaged with a teeny tiny Optimus Primey. Yes indeed, this may in fact be the smallest self-contained Transformers figure ever produced. I mean it's definitely the smallest Optimus Prime. Like it makes the world's smallest figure look like a friggin' behemoth. Micromasters tower over it like towers. And it's got like moving parts and a paint job and de facto wheel rims and stuff you'd expect off a proper figure. It doesn't do much but it's only three centimeters big. What do you want? But it's just such an unusual treat and it exists solely to be jammed up inside another toy's butthole. Meaning Stratosphere has the unique ability to poop an Optimus. All of which makes this sphere some sucker an admirably distinctive and respectably bonkers experience. And I still can't really decide if it's actually good. Like it's absolutely fun and memorable and I like it but it also definitely has the air of a rush job. And the whole recreate the moment aspect gives it as much significance as, say, Masterpiece Grimlock's Pinny, or that clear plastic bracket that comes with Masterpiece Inferno. That's you, mate. But creeping that picks aside, there's no way I'm not recommending it. Yes, indeed, I have decided that Revenge of the Fallen is now long enough ago to be considered retro, and it's about time we recognize that it is the eternal god king of the live action toy lines. I have spoken! I mean, while the others were bogged down in cancellations and struggling to translate the on screen pandemonium into plastic straight off the back of Cybertron, Rotifer was the only one that really flexed its muscles, you know? It felt like a party, man. Like an ongoing experimental adrenaline fueled brainstorming. We were all in on it. And Stratosphere is precisely the kind of off the wall, out of nowhere, shot to nothing legend that embodies the devil may care, Gatsby ass decadence of a design team whose last movie just made a billion dollars. Strat's what I'm talking about. Be sure to subscribe for more Fuse Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.